Today on Go Nitro, we take a step back in time to a place made popular by animators over the last four decades, feudal Japan. It's one thing to watch the pros, it's another thing to train with them. But there's just one catch. They've had half their lives, we have half an hour. Because every athlete has a first day. Here's the place, here's the legend, here I am, and my new teacher. I was a goalie for 15 years, but we've never done this before. Experience, zilch. No clue how to start, less clue how to play and neither do you when you start out. Because every athlete has a first day. And you've just been drafted. They say that being a warrior in Japan's ancient times was not just a job, but a lifestyle. Every aspect of this commitment was carefully designed and implemented. Even minor things that most of us take for granted in modern times, like getting dressed and ready for the day, were things that the Japanese warrior did with great detail and precision. So it's no surprise that when learning Aedo, the art of Japanese swordsmanship dating back to the 1100s, that it's quite normal for many hours of practice to be dedicated to a single custom, ritual, or practice. In this episode, I will do my best with being shown a few different traditional techniques that would usually be taught over the course of a couple of months to a beginning practitioner. Our professors, Sensei Colin Pittman. Let's see how we do. So typically, you'd be wearing something like this. this is called uh, well, the pants are called a hakama. This is called uh, a wagi, which just means jacket. And you'd have a whole bunch of series of belts underneath too, and that's for providing support for your your weapon. But for uh, beginners, we're good with just something like this okay. and the sword. So what I'll get you to do is take the belt, start like this, wrap it around as many times as you can. Okay. And then when you're done, you'll slide it around, uh, tie a knot and slide it around so the knot's in the small of your back. You know, so you'll probably so bring it. So crossing yeah. over here. Yeah, now tie it in the knot. Make sure you get this part here underneath the, the whole thing. Yeah, right okay. in there like that. Like that? Yep. Okay. Tie it tight and then just another one another one like that. You don't need to go around the whole thing this time. Okay. So just like this? No, just like you would a regular uh, straight knot. Okay, so like? Yeah, right, like that, perfect. Okay. Okay, uh, make sure it's relatively snug. Okay. You gotta support a weapon with it. So if you can get more than two fingers in between you and the belt, then it's too loose. Aha, uh -huh, I can. No, right there, that's fine. Oh, okay. That was the, you were flat. What I'm talking about is if it's Oh, like that. Yeah. So right there, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. Now rotate it around so the belt, the knot is in the small of your back. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hand this to you. Okay. The starting point is uh, with the segeo, which is the string, okay. in thirds, and in your left hand, like this. Okay. All right. 
so I'll let so, you get a hold of that. Oh, okay, there we go. So, it's a good thing it wasn't a real one. Yeah, break it out um, into thirds. Okay. That's it. Bring your hand across, and you want your thumb on the suba, which is the, uh, the, the guard, and just grab a hold of it, just like that. This type of Japanese sword is known as a katana, and they come in various styles, lengths, and weights. Beginners such as myself will often start out with a wooden one. For one thing, it definitely saves money on band-aids. Uh, we'll, we'll do the bow in, which is what we would do at the start of class every time. First thing you do is bow to showman. So to do that, you're going to bring the sword across, do I switch hands? Yep, you switch hands. Okay. Yep, that's it. Oh, no, you had it right. That's okay. it. And you're going to grab it like oh, that. Just like that. Just like that. With the, so the sharp part here is facing towards the back. Okay. And we're going to bring our heels together. That's it. Okay. And we're going to bow, bend at the waist, keep your back, neck, and head straight. Okay. Uh, just something slight like this. That's it. And we'll bring the sword back across. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, no, bring it across like this. Okay. And then slip your thumb through the scale. Yeah, there you go. Okay. okay. There you go. Okay. okay. So we're going to be bowing to the sword. Okay. Switch hands again. Okay. And bring the scale down across like this. So I have my sword sitting in my right hand. Thumb on the suba, that like that. And you're going to straighten the scale out. So just bring it right down to the side. That's it, and we're going to rotate the sword out like that. That's it, and place it on the ground. Uh, now we bow to the sword, so starting with our left hand, down in front, right hand comes next, and you're going to make a triangle with your thumb and fingers. Mm -hmm. And ideally, you would keep your back and head straight as you pay respect to your weapon. And bring the Hands back to your legs, starting with your right, then left. Okay, so... Like that? Yep, close enough. Uh, body movement is very important, so if you can't do that, there's modified ways of, of doing the bowing. Amanda, actually, you wouldn't mind demonstrating, because she also has any issues. She does this all the time. She's, she's a lot more uh, proficient at it than I am. So uh, we'll, we'll do a, something quick here just to get you loosened up. Okay. I'll get you to draw the sword and what you're going to do, start right foot forward, get your uh, feet so there you go. Yeah. nice and square, hips nice and square. Okay. You want a, a good solid stance uh, to the point where you can just start to see, feel a, a stretch or a flex with your, your calf or yep. your left foot. We're going to get into Kamai, which is a ready position. We're going to draw the sword. First push with your thumb, okay. right, right there, to get it out of the scabbard. Okay. Now you're going to draw with your right hand. Okay. As far forward as you can, and then you're going to pull back there. Okay. And this guy is going to then come out here, like that. Here, you want to make sure you're nice and square. Weight is evenly distributed. Uh, shoulders are straight, but you want to avoid leaning forward or leaning back or anything like that. Uh, you don't want to lock out your elbows as straight as you can without locking them out. So you need a little bit of flex in there. And you should have about a fist width and a half between the butt of the sword and your, your body. Left hand is going to be towards the back. And you want to avoid having it flush with the, the end. That's more uh, kendo style. The weight is going to be held with your pinky finger and your ring finger of your left hand. You should be able to hold the sword like this. You need to hold it more like that. Okay. There, it's going. Your, your wrist is going to be on top, and it's going to feel very uncomfortable. Okay. There you go. That's okay. it. That's better. Okay. The right hand can be a little looser, and it's going to go above your your left hand, similar position. So you can see my right hand. I have that part, my palm over top of the sword. The next step is to actually cut, rotating at the shoulders. Bring the sword up over your head. Your hands are going to be above your forehead. 
you, you want to avoid hyperextending your shoulders. You want to keep it nice and uh, nice and straight, nice and strong. Elbows should be as straight as you can without locking them out. So you, you're going to extend, flex your wrists, cut, and then relax and pull the sword back to where you started. Take your uh, right hand, grab the sagao, bring it across, right hand underneath, no, so you're going to pinch the end there with your hand, and bring your hand across and slide it underneath oh. the saya. Is it like this? Yeah, like that, and put okay. your thumb on the suga. Left hand then comes out, grab the end, okay. and we're going to put it into our belt. So you want to make sure the curved part or the sharp part is sticking up. Alright, next thing is to deal with the sagao, okay. which is the, the rope here. Okay. You're going to bring it across and stick it into your belt like this. You're going to make a loop. That's it. And then with the slack that you have here, you're going to make another loop and shove that through the first one. There we go. Yeah, give that a good tug. You want it to be nice and tight. Okay. Good. All right. And then we stand up, right foot, and then left foot. Oh. Doing this, this full speed. Should look something like that. Hey, not bad. Oh, I bounced it down. No, that's okay. What you did was pretty good. You just stopped a little too soon. You want oh, to make oh, it go okay. all the way, all, all the way down to where you first started. It'll be oh. right, right around where your pelvis is. Good. So you, you had a little too much oomph in there. Okay. Um, there's, uh, and that's that's normal. Everyone wants to throw the arms in there. Okay. It's all about tightening your core and letting gravity do the work. So. Uh, can't really tell with the wooden weapons, but when you have something like this with a, a blood group or a he, okay. uh, that's what gives it that whooshing sound. And if you're using all your arms, very high pitched. Yeah. If you're tightening your core and letting gravity do the work, it should be a fuller, deeper sound. There we go. That one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Again. Not bad. Again. Keep your elbows straight. That's it. Good, that was pretty good. The next step after you've done the cut is called a chiburi or, or a blood flick. And there's two kinds. There's o chiburi, which is what I'm about to show you. And then there's yoku chiburi, which is a short movement to the side. Typically what we do after we've done a cut is we'll bring the sword out all the way to the side straight back almost like you're stabbing someone behind you. Okay. Bend at the elbow to the point where you could touch your temple. You don't want to make a habit of this, but this is a good check to see if you're in the right spot. And then you're going to bring the sword forward in a small arc and finish with a triangle between your shoulder, the tip of your sword, and your wrist. Let go with your left, okay. and you're going to bring the sword back, leading with the tip, and it's going to go straight back parallel with your arm. Indeed. A little straighter. Okay. There. Now you're going to bend at the elbow. Very close. Right there. The oh. sword should be straight, pointing straight back behind you. Okay. Bring the sword forward. Again, let gravity do the work, and it should go in an arc. So am I arcing this way? Or kind of. This way. No, it's coming straight forward, and you're going to bring the sword out to your right with the tip pointing towards your... Uh, I started in 2004. My, uh, my buddy and I went, went to uh, the first class, he did the demo, and I thought, yeah, we can do this. Uh, realized how 
surprisingly challenging and intricate it is and, and stuck with it. Now, typically in uh, a regular class, I'd, I'd then let the student practice it uh, a few times to you know, get the mechanics down, um, try and you know, get the muscles familiar with the, the new movements and positions because they're awkward. No one's going to do them, those kind of movements on the regular in their, in their daily lives. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll come around, give pointers as necessary because, you know, even, even after years of training, something's going to creep in there and uh, affect your, your cut or what have you. Uh, Amanda was one of my, my first students, so she's been training since 2008. I have a uh, fourth degree black belt, uh, also known as Yundan, and within the uh, All Japan Kendo Federation, there are eight grades. And unlike karate or judo or something like that, where you have different colored belts and, and levels before you get your black belt, in Iaido, you have um, EQ, which is equivalent to a brown belt. And then you have Shodan, which is equivalent to a black belt and different levels of dans after that. So it's the grading style is a little different. And the, um, the multicolored belts and whatnot, you can actually thank uh, Judo for that. And they, that's what um, introduced that. The first kata is called Mai, which just means front. In, in Japanese. Actually, I'll get Amanda to help out with this because uh, we'll, we'll, this is uh, a knee issue that yeah, that will help with. First thing, hands are going to come to the sword, like this, and you're going to come up underneath and curl your hands around. Pardon me. Oh yeah, no, that's perfect. Like that. Oh, okay. Push with the thumb of your left hand. Okay. You're going to then draw with your right, step, and cut across. And you want to make sure you're nice and square so you can see you're leaning forward like this. So you want to make sure your weight's evenly distributed. Bend at the wrist until you can't bend your wrist any further. Then you're going to bend your elbow until the suba, the, the hand guard, is in front of your nose. As you're bringing the sword up over your head, that's when you're going to bring your hand, your left hand, uh, up top, and you're going to pull your your back foot up. Essentially, yeah, you're doing sugiyashi. Yeah, sugiyashi at this point. Step forward with your right and cut at the same time. Cut. And remember, back straight. Oh. <laughs> there you go. To the side, and left hand, there you go. And at the elbow, sword pointing straight back, that's it. That arc, and into the triangle. So you now left foot forward. Don't step into it. So you, you were like this. Yeah, yeah. Bring that left foot up. Oh. Then step back with your right. That's it. Okay. Bring your left hand around the koiguchi, bring it up front. Right hand goes, uh, brings the sword to the side, so you're bringing in like this. Okay. And push out with your right and pull back with your left. You gotta, you gotta loosen your grip here, you gotta death oh, grip. Okay. Use your thumb and your index finger as a pivot point. Okay. So you can actually and get your pinky on, yeah, that's it. You need some stability there, that's it. Okay. Now put, from here, you're going to push with your left so that the saya is in front of your navel. That's it. Turn the sword so that it's now sticking up. Okay. And then you can shoot the sword. Now we're going to bring our back foot up so that we're now standing straight. Okay. Hand goes to the side. And we're going to take four steps back. Or rough. That should get you right back to where you first started.
art of Aedo began in the feudal age of Japan, which spanned between the late 1100s until the end of the 1500s. While the practice of Aedo is kata-based, where movements are heavily choreographed, the maneuvers themselves are based on practicality. Masters train for many years to use the least amount of effort necessary to perform each action. Think about it this way. If two lamps have the same type of battery, but one uses a regular light bulb and the other an LED bulb, the first lamp will burn out faster because the older style of bulb uses more energy to produce the same amount of light as the LED. It's the same with the human body. An efficient swordsman can do less work to achieve the same result and therefore last longer on the battlefield. Only on Go Nitro. If the show doesn't end here, visit us online for your fix at gonitro.tv. You can follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can tweet us on Twitter. Go Nitro Access is brought to you by Melville, Saskatchewan. It's bigger on the inside. Aviva Canada. Salon services for Go Nitro provided by ID Hair Studio. Hair for who you really are. Don't fit in. Stand out with black chrome.